G'day, welcome to the Nerdy Dad channel and the Nerdy Dad review of Obi-Wan Kenobi part four. As with the other episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, this episode was directed by Deborah Chow. I am gonna break the episode down and talk about it in a spoiler manner. So this is your spoiler warning. If you care about spoilers, watch Obi-Wan Kenobi part four and then come back and watch this review. With only six episodes in the season, we're in the back end now. There's only two episodes to go, and as such, the pace has not let up from last week. Time for a Clone Wars flashback. Nope. Time for Obi-Wan to heal and reflect upon the revelation of what his former apprentice is. Nope. There's a princess that needs rescuing. Not only that, he's able to convince the people operating the path to help him rescue the princess, because she knows too much and she could compromise their operation. We're straight into it. Go big or go home. And while this week didn't have anything that had the impact on me that the Vader action last week did, they definitely went big. Leia is being held in the Fortress Inquisitorius, which is a fantastical backdrop to the majority of the episode. And Tala somehow didn't get identified last week, and she's still got the clearance of an Imperial officer. So she is able to gain access to the Fortress and open a back door for Kenobi. We spend a lot more time in more rooms of the Fortress than we did last week so we get a much better look at the place. It's been a while since I've played Fallen Order, so I could be wrong, but I think we even get a better look at it this week than we got in Fallen Order, and I am not disappointed. Among the things we find out about the fortress, as Obi-Wan discovers it, is that the fortress is also a tomb. I wasn't able to identify all the Jedi that Obi-Wan passes, but I think that first one was Terra Sinube from the Clone Wars episode, Lightsaber Lost. And I think the youngling was one of the younglings from part one. I think it's this one. If Reva is indeed the black girl from those younglings, that means she regularly passes the body of a child that she grew up with. That's sickening. It's another way the Empire, or at least the Sith within the Empire, constantly tortures her, breaks her. There is no escape from the dark side. Once you start down that dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny. Obi-Wan doesn't do too badly for an old Jedi whose body hasn't healed from the flames and whose soul hasn't recovered from the shock of finding out what became of Anakin. It's mostly stormtroopers he carves up, but he absolutely wrecks shop and he manages to rescue Leia. We then see some T-47 airspeeders in action, which is cool. These ones haven't been modified by the Rebellion to become snowspeeders uh, like we recognise from Empire Strikes Back. Obi-Wan, Leia and Tala all get out of there, which is brilliant. But there's an explanation for the ease of their escape. When Vader lets Leia go and puts a tracking beacon on the Millennium Falcon in A New Hope, she'd seen that tactic before, and now we know when she'd seen it. Vader is going to execute Reva for her failure, until she reveals that she put a tracking device on Lola. Leia is going to lead Vader and the Inquisitors straight to Obi-Wan and straight to the path. So it looks like the pace and the stakes are not going to slow down at all next week as we build towards the finale. But for now, this is the Nerdy Dad signing off. Hey, a quick one if you're still with me. Miss Marvel aired the same night as Obi-Wan. At the time of filming, I haven't seen it yet. But the plan is to watch it tomorrow and post a review sometime before the end of the week. If you like Marvel as well as Star Wars, I'll see you then.